Hello, hello. I am Zade. We are back here with another episode of Drama Quest. I think this is like episode four. So today we're going to be talking about the Vulac server. But before we get into that, uh, just a few shout outs. Um, so please, if you haven't already, check the description. We have a link to the Discord. We have a link to a few other things that you should get involved with. So check those out. If you're listening to this on YouTube, please note that YouTube is getting the podcast a week late. So if you want to hear it as soon as it comes out, please check it out on Spotify, Drama Quest. Uh, with that said, today we're talking about Vulak. And so we have none other than Liren, aka Melisine, the leader of the League of Grand Adventurers. She's going to be here to talk about the, the server lifetime with us. So Liren, pass it to you. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, so Vulak, I will start by saying that I'm probably not your typical interviewer here, for the obvious reasons. Um, I didn't come to Vulak with a plan. <laughs> I ended up on Vulak by accident, entirely by accident. I was waiting for the next expansion of EverQuest 2 to come out, and I was bored. And uh, Solaron, my husband, leaned over to me and said, hey, you want to check out uh, this progression server thing that EQ has? I was like, sure, why not? So I rolled up uh, a throwaway enchanter with, a, I think I used a name generator name, uh, and I started running around Greater Fair Uh So it was, it was very unplanned. I had not played EverQuest since it was new. And when I had last played it, um, it was before college, so... I think I max leveled a ranger to 66. I had never raided before beyond doing a couple of things for my epic. I never progressed further than elementals in pop era, and I quit around DON. So completely casual player. Um, I had done some endgame raiding in EverQuest 2, and that's where I really learned how to raid. But it, completely different uh, ballpark, like instance raiding in EQ2, 24 men limit. Uh, it was just, I was coming in unprepared <laughs> and it showed. <laughs> so how did you end up leading a guild? Uh, so running around in greater fate arc, I got invited to this nothing guild. It was just a little leveling guild. Uh, after a few days I had made some friends, um, and I wanted to invite them to nothing guild, but the leader was never online. So I got frustrated and uh, me and Sol just spun up the League of Grand Adventures with no plan for it. It was supposed to just be a, a, a leveling guild or something to hang out in. And over time, I grew it. Uh, some key factors in my real life affected this. Not long after Vulak launched, I actually was laid off. It was not too long after like the Great Recession. Um, and I was unemployed for a while. So I had lots and lots of free time. <laughs> And I played a lot of EverQuest, um, so that's how that's how that started. Okay, okay, yeah. And did you guys just invite people as you grouped with them? How did, did you advertise? Like, when did it start happening? By the way, League of Grand Adventures, a great guild name. <laughs> Solaron will be pleased to hear that we got so much flack for that guild name because it's very role play and it's not at all fierce sounding like a lot of endgame guilds are. Um, but we ended up being a raiding guild. I probably would not have picked that name had I had planned uh, on a raiding guild in the beginning. Uh, I do like it as well. So I leveled slowly. I think you guys were probably, by you guys, I mean faces, were probably already raiding while I was still in level 30 or something. We raided, we leveled naturally, met people randomly, built up the guild over time. Um, I think it started to get serious right around the time you and I met, honestly. Uh, yeah, I think I set to work finding <laughs> finding ways that I could use you in in the uh, the war for raid mobs almost uh, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So I had I think by the time we ran into each other, I had enough high levels in my guild that we could actually assist you. Um, and we weren't we weren't making plans to raid yet. I could see already the raiding landscape was not favorable. It was a shit show <laughs> you guys were already battling it out um so we determined that when we would not start raiding until kunark but if you recall okay. uh this well this is your i think this is where you come in so if you want to go ahead yeah so i mean like i don't want to get too far ahead of it um but basically 
you and I, I guess before you and I met, Faceless was already raiding. So I, I came to the Vulac server. Um, I don't even know if it was day one. Like I wanted to play it on that progression server that I had been hearing about. I had been back to EQ for just a couple months at that time. I think I was playing on Front of I. And uh, one of my friends was like, hey, I'm going to go to this other server and try to join this top guild there. And I was like, well, I heard there's a fresh server coming out and I... I want to start my own guild there and try that. You should come with me. He ended up deciding not to. Um, so I, I started on Vulac by myself. And I was definitely not like poop socking the login or anything like we do now. I didn't know anybody. So I, I log in and uh, I don't know anything about the meta. So I go to the place that I liked as a kid. And I guess at this time I was I was <laughs> only just legally an adult, really. So pretty much still a kid. But of course, I, I rolled up a monk in um, North Kanos. And I uh, decided immediately I wanted to make the top guild on the server, whatever that meant. I, I had no idea what it would entail. And I, uh, I wanted to call it the Black Company after a series of I books that I really that. liked. <laughs> yeah, I remember you telling right. me that. <laughs> now, EverQuest guild names are globally unique. So of course, any well-known name like that was taken. And I just kind of thought of something that would feel similar, you know what I mean? And I mm -hmm. landed on the faceless and it wasn't taken, so I, I went with it. And proceeded to immediately invite everyone I could target with my mouse. It's so like <laughs> spam invite. And somehow it wasn't a complete disaster at first. Anyway, I tried to level as fast as I could, but I was pugging and I didn't really realize like what the upper echelon of dedication was. Like you, I was unemployed, but <laughs> I was unemployed because I had never before been employed. <laughs> Um, so I had a ton, a ton, a ton of free time and I, I hadn't started college yet, or I might've been like between semesters or something, um, in like my first year. So I, I went hard and the other big guilds around at that time, I think it looked early on, it looked like dead halfling society, or I think they were called undead halfling society was going to be the top guild. Now DHS, as we call them was on the sleeper server or the combine server before yeah they had I, a long history i and i at one point i had their original raid leader as my raid leader yeah was it gremin yeah yeah gremin yep. he's yeah he's a good guy um so they they raided on a previous progression server and they were a guild that stayed one expansion behind and had a lot of success with that now the problem here is that those expansions were like every month a new expansion. You could do it because a lot of people just couldn't keep up with that pace. On Vulac and Fippy, you had a minimum of three months in every expansion. And on top of that, you first had to clear the expansion before that clock even started. So there was, uh, it was harder to be that guild, but people didn't know it going in. Mm -hmm. On top of that, like the EXP rates were, were totally different. It was slower on Vulac than in the previous servers, but it was like artificially slower. We didn't have the EXP rates that we see on progression now, which feel kind of natural. If you remember back then, Liren, it was a uh, it was just hard capped at two percent EXP per kill. Yeah, Do you remember it was, that? It was a slug. So like even at level forty five, you were getting two percent per kill, and you were also getting two percent when you're killing rats in the newbie yard. So it took fifty kills at level one to get level two, and it took the same amount at like level forty five. It was crazy. <laughs> I had no frame of reference because I had not played original EQ in so long that that felt normal to me. Right. I mean, at first, like when you're in those early levels, you don't know that it's just like this weird cap. So you're like, holy shit, this is like really slow, like the old days. And then later on, you're like, it's actually like getting faster. Like our mob throughput is higher. Everything is, it, yeah, it was just totally weird. Um, but anyway, so I started Faceless. Boom. I started advertising and I think general chat existed back then. I was like, hey, we're going to be the premier guild join faceless. I went into full advertisement mode. Um, and of course people like back then cared about credentials a lot and no one knew me. So they're like, oh, okay. Like, have you led raids before? Like what, what was your guild background? So I just made something up. I had never raided anything. <laughs> I had never had a max level character. And I was like, yeah, I've led a ton of raids. I was in like all these guilds and people like spot it. You hit and, it. Uh, you hit it pretty well. Cause I, when we first met, I thought you were hot shit. <laughs> Well, I mean, just, you know, just be confident, I guess. <laughs> I was a young, confident, dumb, lying kid. So the I, I remember I was in Lower Guck one night, and I saw the Lord Nagavin server-wide. And I thought we were going to not get the server first kill anyway, because 
um, Dead Halfling Society had a, had like a another like one or two groups of fifties before us, and uh, I was like, holy shit, somebody got Nagafin. Who was it? And I think it was the server wide was Magical. It was a character called Magical, and come to find out, it was basically killed by one group of people, three dudes boxing, Merlin. Magical panties and copper fist. Now the other two guys become relatively unimportant, but magical panties, aka damn door, <laughs> would become the leader of mischief and chaos. And well, I think Merlin was the leader of mischief and chaos, which was the guild they formed basically when they killed Nagafin. And then damn door would later lead a coup against him with some other people, making EOE. And EOE is a guild that you know people know of today. It's a, it's a kind of a big bigish name. But uh, yeah, they got the kill and everyone was blown away because like, I didn't, I didn't think you could do it with that kind of force, right? This may I have think... been even before I joined the server. I think this happened within the first couple of weeks. And I know I started about 10 days in. So th this might have already occurred before I even was a character made. 100% it happened before 10 days. It was, yeah. um, I think it was like day five or six, Nagafin got killed. And, you know, they did it with mage pads. Mm -hmm. Basically, Copper Fist was a monk. Dambor was a monk. Merlin Magical were mages. They had an enchanter and I think one more mage box. So basically, three mages they they killed Nagafin with. And there was a there was an exploit which existed for many years um, that people learned. I think primarily through the OMM missions where you could which old man Mackenzie, but anyway, um, you could attack Nagafin through the wall with your pets, and they would both fight. Nagafin has no line of sight, so he doesn't use his AEs and that exploit, that geometry exploit has been like refined in many ways all the way up to today where guilds still use it, but with players instead of pets. But anyway, the long story short was you could basically keep pets up faster than Nagfin could keep them down. So eventually he just lost. And uh, those three guys were all from a guild on live called Stronghold of Savages, which was briefly the top guild on their server. I can't even remember what server they were from now. Um, so we were all shocked by that. I think all the high levels from DHS actually like quit and went to Mischief and Chaos when that happened. A few people from Faceless did that too. And like we just weren't ready. You know what I mean? I had no idea yeah. what it was going to take. That was so, it. That yellow text was like, okay, there. that's the guild. That's the guild, right. Right. By, by the time um, Faceless was getting ready to, to where I felt confident to start raids, EOE was working on Sky. So like Mischief and Chaos had already like stopped raiding, I think. Um, just trying to think of what happened here. So, the only thing we killed was Finny at that point. We we killed Finny several times, and EOE had already killed both dragons. They ended up killing both gods. I led a joint raid with Dead Halfling Society in Plane of Fear for Kazakh Thul. <laughs> That's what it was. The server first Kazakh Thul. We went for, we went for that, and uh, the other three mobs, big mobs, had already been killed. So. The whole time Merlin is watching us and we, you know, we clear Draco, we clear all the golems. There's nothing left in the zone except for CT. And then EOE starts rolling in our mischief chaos starts rolling in and they just send like six mages on it before we engage. And back oh, that then is, that is so classic. <laughs> back that was, then that was their playbook all the way through. Ooh. Right. Yeah. We were super stupid. Um, me, especially so because I saw them attack CT and I was like, well, there's nothing we could do. Maybe they'll wipe. And if I could go back, you know what I mean? You just would just jump on CT and kill them, right? And win the yep. DPS race because they didn't yeah. have a big force. But we wanted to play nice and we we really believed, both guilds at that time really believed like, hey, first person to engage it has the rights to it. You don't, you don't kill steal. Kill stealing was totally taboo. DPS racing wasn't even a concept that we thought of. And so we just watched them kill this this server first mob right in front of us. That's just it. I mean, Vulak was Vulak wasn't the first progression server, but it was an early one. And the population that existed on Vulak were very much old school EQ types, where we still believed in the play nice policy, and we didn't uh, leapfrog, and we didn't kill steel, and reputation mattered. So we we got hit with these people from live who had long ago abandoned those tenants oh yeah uh and we were just standing there with our hats in our hand going like uh this is not cool dudes right <laughs> yeah and this was like five or six years after combine and sleeper launched by the way so it wasn't like nowadays where you have a new tlp every year so um 
there was a lot of people who were just like new, new oh, to yeah. they like were returning after a decade of not playing EQ. You know what I mean? And yeah, we didn't have the same population we have today. We you, you, we're all jaded now. We we get a new TLP every year, and this wasn't even technically a TLP. This was a voting locked yeah. regression server, just DLP. like Combine. <laughs> yeah, but just like Combine and Sleeper, it, we had a little bit longer of a, a a waiting period. I can't remember if it was two or three months. You said three months earlier. It was three months. Every um, single expansion was ninety days. Right, and we still after still the mob side. Yeah, we still had to do not just the mobs. We still had that system in place where we had to meet certain criteria to unlock the next expansion. Oh, so yeah, you're right. We had to do we, the epics. And... We had to do epics. We had to do uh, all of the armor set pieces in Velius. So we 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 were we even still had that awesome little online chart thing where it at tracked. the beginning. Yeah, at the beginning until it broke about halfway through. Um, so it was it was a combination of sleeper and combine. They they took some learnings from it by like making the waiting period longer but uh it was everybody i met was there with the same story i never got to raid back whenever quest was new or i quit when this expansion came out and i want to see it i want to see the content i never had a max level character i never finished my epic we were all tourists <laughs> we were all we were not hardcore raiders we were all people there who were there for the nostalgia i think that's the same thing for every guild except for the guild that became AOE. Like every one yeah. of these guilds was like, it was the guilds were composed of people who were seeking the thing they didn't get in, in original, right? They wanted to see that raid content because they were not raiders. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and boy, were they in for an experience. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we all didn't realize that we would have to play PvP first in order to... Raid. Yes. Like, yes. We, would, <laughs> we came back, it's like, yeah, our biggest challenge is going to be Nagafin. Nope, you have to get access to Nagafin first <laughs> before you right. can even attempt it. <laughs> Casual players don't deserve to kill Nagafin. Oh, uh, I heard that so much. <laughs> I heard it so much. So, um, so yeah, we, we lost that CT. We would, like, race on Finnegal, and we went for a race on Inrook, and GM got involved and GM kicked us out because they said that, you know, we reached 21 characters slower than them or something. So we all got ported out of Plane of Hate by good old GM Deodan. Oh my God, it was Deodan? Yeah. Deodan will come back into the story later on. Wait, just wait. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> I remember they did a petition to get Deodan fired. Uh, yeah, that was probably the, the same thing. I'm talking yeah. to you about it in Pop Era. Yeah, I'm ready for it. But um, so, yeah, so, so that was going on. And then at this same time, I guess this guy Merlin in Mischief and Chaos, I remember him being like a real loot whore. Like he was that guy who would actually sit on the mob when he's at like 1% and spam right click it to, to get that loot window. And Jesus. and he rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Mischief and Chaos also ended up recruiting this big click from P99, which was the Inglorious Bastards click that couldn't get onto Fippy because of the Q. So that was Arduin, Ashkari, and a bunch of other people whose names I, I can't remember. Mm. Um, and Arduin, all this is going on, and I'm probably like in lower guck, just like leveling. <laughs> right. Arduin and I, I remember, were talking a lot because I was trying to get him to come over to my side. I was always trying to poach these guys. And he ended up convincing Damdor to instead lead a coup against Mischief and Chaos. At least this is what I remember. And it was super successful. Everyone left except for Merlin. They reformed as. Echoes of Elysium, which I believe was Arduin's uh, idea for a guild name. Arduin was technically the leader for like the first two weeks, but I think he he quit pretty early on and Damdor became the leader. And they were pushing hard to clear Plane of Sky because they hadn't cleared Sky yet. And that's when... our timer wasn't running yet. I, you know, for some reason, I don't remember if you even had to kill Aya Vishan or not. I, I couldn't remember either. I only knew but, Damdor as the leader of EOE. Yeah. And his, I mentioned this in, the, in a previous podcast, but he's he's notable for having that name because Damdor at that time was like a famous player from uh, Fennin, Fennin Row. Mm -hmm. And people would frequently be like, oh, are you like that Damdor? And Damdor had to explain a lot of times, like, no, I'm just a guy who like knew him. I was his friend or whatever. And I, I use this name. But uh, I think that annoyed him that he had to keep doing that. Mm. He changed and his we, name later on. What did he change it to? Uh, I'll tell you in a second. Keep talking. I have it. Okay. <laughs> it's funny because like on Discord, I was I was talking to him t tonight actually, and his name is still Damdor, so he went back to it. But um, so they're in, they're in playing the sky, and we're like, okay, now's our chance. Like Nagafin pops, we we rush it, and uh, we we get them, 
and we start doing this thing called poop socking. We decide to sock every single mob. There's a 12 hour window. And every time the window starts, we go and we we're sitting there as soon as the window starts and we wait the full 12 hours and we're getting some success because EOE does not want to sock. And eventually one of their officers whose name I can't remember hits me up and he's like, Hey, or she, she was like, Hey, why don't we just do like a, a rotation? Um, because like, we don't want to have to sock for 12 hours to get this terrible classic loot. And I was like, absolutely, let's do it. So we split it up 50, 50, which is a terrible idea, by the way, if you ever make a rotation, you should do like a guaranteed yeah. portion for, for each guild and then a free for all portion so that people can get some of the, the, the bad blood out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we didn't have that. We just had a clean 50, 50. And so they would get theirs and we would get ours and everything was pretty smooth. We didn't have any issues with it, but I, uh, being a young tool was not <laughs> content to have the 50, 50. I, um, I, I met Lyran and there was one other guild called like something virus. Do you remember the name? No, no, these, but we, we were all really small at this point. Right. Yeah. Guilds back then. Like if you, if you had 50 characters in your guild, you were a huge Zerg. Yep. And and when you're saying 50-50 loot, we're talking like seven or eight pieces of loot <laughs> like per mob that, that spawned twice a week. Yeah, it was like very loot starved for everybody. Even like if you were getting all the kills, there was not a lot of loot. So never mind 50-50 splitting it. So yeah, so we were um, talking 50-50, you got three pieces of loot for right. like an 18 hour poop song. Right. And even after the um, the rotation went into place, we still socked every single mob. And we advertised very heavily, and people started to think that Faceless was the top guild. And, I think uh, that your PR um, skills in Classic were to be commended. Thanks. <laughs> I've always kind of gotten myself in trouble with, with PR, I think. By the time that I was starting to go, hey, maybe we should raid in Loga, I thought Faceless was the top guild. I had never heard of Mischief and Chaos. I knew that EOE existed, but it was faceless's game to lose at that point just from the impression i got from general chatter etc right now here's the the real scoop though is that faceless back then was terrible our players really were awful i was a terrible i mean still a terrible raid leader but then i was really atrocious and um eoe actually had a tremendous amount of talent in it so i think the way things went was probably how it was always going to go Faceless was willing to recruit and get bigger. And if we ever beat them, it would have been because of the numbers game. Yeah. Um, but the harm touch wars in the inability to use macro quest basically seal, would later seal the deal. But anyway, before we get into all that, we have the 50 50 rotation. And that rotation was a secret. Only we two knew about it. And I would go to, I went to two other guilds. There's a virus guild, which I think was actually led by Xanapox from Celestial Tomb from the vshan server you know like the guild that mm -hmm. yeah, used yeah. to get dunked on by foh that guy used to rant to me about fires of heaven all the time and uh we went to him and i i went to you and i i basically was like hey you guys should go for these dragons on these days and we will not contest you i think you maybe i i let you in on the scoop that like eoe would contest you yeah uh, but we were friendly enough that you weren't uh, about to throw me to the dogs <laughs> yet. I, well, you and um, I, I think, became real friends. We did, and like at this point, we had we had randomly met. Uh, we should tell you how we met. We randomly met the plat dupe. Yep, in Freeport. So early on, Vulok, there was a plat dupe, and one of my friends had farmed it, handed me a bunch of plat because he knew I was working on jewel crafting. So I was sitting in Freeport at the jewel merchant, uh, just just combining away and Zade rolls up and says, Hey, and immediately think, I think that I'm busted. I'm like, Oh shit, this is a GM. He's about to kick me out of the game. And it was just this uh, monk there asking me if I maybe wanted to join his guild. <laughs> is that what I did? Did I ask if you wanted to join my guild? I think you did. Uh, Cause I was a high level enchanter at that point. And there was probably one of the fewer ones around. I think there weren't yeah. that many enchanters because nobody knew the enchanter game yet. Like it was still, it was still not a server where charming enchanters was the meta. Nobody. Oh yeah, definitely not. It was it was a mage server. Everyone had mages, but there weren't that many enchanters around. Um, I think that is what you said. But either way, we figured out pretty quick that you were a GM. But after that, we were we were friendly. Um, 
I remember we would make alts and go off and like level on our off nights just to get away from the guild drama and stuff like that. So we were real, we were real friends. Uh, so when you asked me to do this, I kind of wanted nothing, no part of it. <laughs> Didn't I first invite you to like a Lady Vox of ours? Like you came and, and yeah. did a Vox kill with us? Yeah, I did. I got to see it. Um, at this point, I was hearing all of the drama that was going on between these guilds um, from you. And my guild was, we had, I want to say, 15 or 20 people who were max level. And we yeah. had no intentions of raiding until Kunark opened, which was a good, I think, month and a half away still. At um, least, yeah. At least. So I knew that I didn't want to stick my neck out. I did not want to be on EOE or any of these top guilds radar as a guild to crush. Because guilds were dropping like flies in Classic. They yeah, were just, they were dying left and right. They were dying left and right. Uh, they were merging with uh, each other. And I had built this little bubble of a safe guild that I liked, that I had friends in, and I didn't want it to see it destroyed because I got in over my head. I had never raided before. Um, and while I was interested, we could wait. I was like, no, nope, we're going we're gonna to wait to till Kunark, all these disco drama will move on to the next expansion and we'll just happily do our thing when everyone moves on. Yeah. Um, but somehow I ended up in an alliance with you and a few other guilds contesting EOE and Classic, at least informally. We would give you numbers. I think you needed bodies. Um, and it was done very unofficially. I told my guild that this was not like an official guild sanctioned event but you had an open invitation to go to Faceless's raids uh, when they're sitting on targets. Yeah. I think that's how we handled it. I, I don't know if we need... We were pretty hefty, but maybe. Or maybe I was just trying to like warm warm things up to, to later come together, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it also gave you weight. You were trying to unite the server against EOE. It was oh, very, absolutely. It was very clear that that's what you were doing. And... Uh, I was not dumb. I could see the writing on the wall. If EOE won this battle, every other guild was going to die and it was going to be me left or me and a few other guilds left to deal with this this uh, leapfrogging, kill-stealing, uh, warping, cheating guild. That's what they yeah. were known for, even in Classic, that these guys did not care about the play nights policy they were not interested in sharing they were here to take every mob they could get their hands on um yeah you people were there should know that like okay go ahead e even while we were in this kind of rotation agreement the guilds did not like each other like there was a ton of trash talk on every forum like they would come to our forums and your forums and talk trash about guilds mm -hmm. and their own our I, not you guys, you guys were always very nice but like our website and EOE's website we would update making fun of each other and stuff Oh yeah. Um, so like, there was peace if you just look at the server wides, but behind the scenes there was like a lot of bad blood building up as people were like they were hungry to find out who actually could kill shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember like uh, Vicart came to our website and started talking trash in in the forums, and I owned the website, so I would just edit his messages to call him a retard and stuff, and he would get <laughs> so mad. Um, yeah, that was the kind of drama that I wanted to avoid i i didn't want to get pulled into it um but i was not dumb so i do distinctly remember helping you on the sly as much as possible um without drawing the ire of some of these more predatory guilds you know what was weird though was like dead halfling society was always the guild that had the the force that they could have swayed the way things went and they were always unwilling to choose a side no they were chill i think they were happy to wait until like the drama moved on too and they were rated expansion behind or or uh, or at least slightly behind the leaders they didn't want the conflict either that's what they yeah they were they were content to do that but like eventually the reality became clear like it just wasn't going to work right no it, it, we didn't know though we yeah it, we i remember being so frustrated because i was like you guys have more bodies than anyone you've got so many level 50s if you would just join this alliance we could have an amicable server after like one month of of a little bit of warfare, but they just never would bite. Mm -hmm. So that was like the one guild that was outside of things. They just refused to raid. I think they did some small finny stuff or whatever they could, but they were not poop socking mobs, mobs, and they refused to get involved. Yep, totally, totally refused. It was the worst. Um, there was another guild, Black Syndicate, that was around. They were they were a big guild, but they only did Sky. They they I think they tried once or twice to contest and never did anything successful in Classic. Mm -hmm. And I think they were done by the end of Classic, really. 
No, they they, they raced in Kunark a little bit. Um, they beat us on a Severalis kill. I remember. You're right because I uh, there was some contention about Darth's warrior epic and getting uh getting yeah. the first warrior epic on the server. Good times. Um, <laughs> there was another guild called uh, Jesters of something. I don't remember, but they were led by this guy named Karnak. And I remember we beat him on a race to Finney because guilds actually raced to Finney every now and then back then. And that dude, like the next day was in EOE. Like he was very mad <laughs> and looking for an opportunity to get some revenge there. So just like to, to step back here, this server, anyone who plays on TLP now would not recognize this server. There was, there were no agents of change. There were no pick zones. The mobs were on a much longer respawn timer and dropped only one loot table. Mage pets had not been scaled back, so they were godlike. Um, like six mages could take on anything in classic. Um, they had not fixed things like Shatter Knight Harm Touch, so that became a big deal later on. There was no chrono on this server. Um, and it, most of the people who, were, who came to the server were casual, so it's just a completely different environment from a modern TLP. Yeah, absolutely. So then um, I think it was before the Sony hack, because the Sony hack, when we came back from the Sony hack, it was right at the end of Classic, right? Yeah, Sony hack happened. So the server launched in February. The hack happened at the beginning of, the, of May. And all yeah. EverQuest servers were down for, I think, six weeks. Yeah. So right at the beginning of this baby server where things are just starting to get real spicy, we all had to take a vacation for six weeks. Yeah. And that was like right at the tail end of classic. So before that happened, though, you know, I think EOE started to realize they were getting a lot of competition on their days and I, we were not experiencing much competition. Now, I had a personal life tragedy uh, where a family member of mine was was actually murdered and uh I, I was out of town for a while handling, not handling that because I was like a fucking kid, but I, I went to like the funeral and the wake and um, I'm not going to get into yeah. too much with that. But during that time, the other guild, not Loga, their guild leader like joined EOE. And uh, immediately what I had been doing, having other guilds contest only EOE's targets. Became common knowledge. <laughs> yeah, it became common knowledge. And uh that was people it. Were, they had it in for you then. <laughs> yes. People started texting me because, of course, back then, no Discord or anything. So I'm getting text messages like, EOE's broken the rotation. Like, oh, no. When I finally get back home, travel across the country or whatever, um, it's like full warfare. Everyone's mad. And it's back to like poop sock and dragons, DPS races and stuff. This is after we came back. So much changed during those six weeks, though. Lots of guilds died. Yeah, Lost a lot of guilds never never recovered from that six weeks. So when we came back, the people who were left were I'm crazy that the rotation was still intact at all. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like we came back and and it was it was a big thing. And we went right to fighting. And we, I, there was this big Nagfin poop sock we had. And, uh, the, you know, the Shadow Knight Wars were begun at this point. Like we knew we knew the, the thing about Shadow Knights. Um. And Nagavan spawned and we got the kill. We beat EOE. It was the first time that they ever ever had like a contested loss. Did you have and, your Shadow Knights leveled yet at this point, or was that just a clean win? Uh I think we, we didn't have Shadow Knight boxes. We just had Natty Shadow Knights. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, I think they did already have Shadow Knight boxes. Though the story is the the legend of this encounter was that uh Damdor himself had all the Shadow Knights ready to to go. He left the poop sock literally to go take a dump, oh, and shit. and Nagafin spawned. So you know, by not staying true to the literal poop sock, he lost that mob. EOE handles losses very very poorly. I guess that you could say they handle them really well, but they they doubled down in a crazy way. And I remember Woolius, who was like this real scumbag that was in their oh, guild. Oh, I do remember him. Yes, Woolius hit me up, and he's like. You guys are never going to get anything on Kunark launch. We were going to play nice. Now you will get nothing, nothing at all. And uh, I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. So we level up our Shadow Knights. They level up even more Shadow Knights. And we're all kind of eye on the prize at the end there. Um, Woolius was a piece of work. He was one of the very few people in EOE who attacked me directly in Classic because I was friends with you. Yeah. Like, he I, if I'd zone into the same open world chat with him, he would immediately start personal attacks on me. 
Now, Woolius, for people who know, uh, was in Akadon Strike Force, which was the guild that competed with, competed with Insidious Vision on the sleeper server. It had like Fotec and all those dudes in it. Woolius, yeah, like he was a, I think he was like a lawyer in real life, or he was he was finishing law school is what he was doing. That guy was a lawyer. Holy shit. Yeah. And that I was, was like scum in the universe. Yeah. <laughs> I was preparing to join the military at that time. And he used to send me tells like, you're joining the military because you're a retard and you're just going to go and die because that's what people in the military do. And I'm like, damn, dude, like, this is crazy. I'm like, fucking, I can't yeah, believe you're, you're like, sending me this message right now, dude. Like, I'm just camping in Ruck here. Chill out. It was, it was, it was intense. For... Yeah. <laughs> We're not prepared for that. Um, so you start, I remember you started preparing the SKs because you knew it was coming. Uh, yeah. I did not want to be, so also launches happened at 3 a.m., Oh, back, yeah. back in the day. So it was midnight uh, California time when expansions would go live. So if you wanted to play at launch, you were playing at 3 a.m. in the morning and there were not a lot of people who were willing. Um, I was able to play, but I did not want to get my guild involved because this was going, this was getting real ugly real fast. Like yeah. I was aware of all this stuff that was happening, but I still wanted Faceless to win because I did not, like it was very self-serving as much as we were friends. I knew if Faceless lost, the server would be in for a bad way. Uh, so I leveled a pard uh, to go and help you charm key mobs in Track's teeth so that you can yep. get the first track kill um, away from Ely. So that was how I contributed to your launch effort. I rolled up a, a bard that was ungilded uh, and I ran around Track's teeth at three in the morning, charming every key mob I could and bringing it to your guild. Yeah, and uh, you, you, and didn't Depredation help us too? Maybe I think Depp was in Loga at that point. If not, he was yeah. he was getting close to leaving Black Syndicate and joining us. Yeah, and then Naroku, I think. Yep, yep. He was an early two, paladin. Two top tier paladins right there. Uh, I, I guess we should take a second here before we go into the Kunark launch. Can you talk about your officer team? God, I actually cannot remember who my officers were in Classic. I remember I was doing a ton of it myself. I will say, I knew nothing about raiding. So as we were starting to gear up for raids, I was actively looking to recruit raid leaders from other guilds that had done this before, because I fucking knew nothing. Um, I eventually ended up, I remember raiding in Sky, we picked up DHS, DHS's raid leader. Uh, he was going by Drellic at that time, and he brought a okay. small team with him, and he ran my raids for me. I took care of everything else. Um, we had some other lingering uh, officers. Of course, my husband was still active at that point, so Solaron was one of them that helped with admin, maintaining DKP and Skybanks and all that. But my raid force was almost always recruited from other guilds. Okay. Or my raid leader force. Now, DHS, I... I don't remember the leader's name, but I remember the big officer from them that I knew. I think Beebles was an officer. And then mm -hmm. Backlav, a.k.a. Azuth, who was like this guy who never stopped talking. Very annoying. I didn't know Azuth. Beebles ended up in my guild, uh, I think, at the end of Kunark. And he was a longtime officer for me. Beebles was good. Was, was a real good dude. Yeah, he's a great He's a great guy. We're still, we still talk. We're still friends in real life. Black Syndicate had Darth as a raid leader. He would become important... In, in Lockjaw timeline, so next server. But uh, for now, he was just a, a not particularly talented raid leader for a guild that did not get to raid very frequently. Who and I despised. they were led. Yeah, they had a, a co leadership team. Two dudes led it. I, I want to say one was Zazzy and one was something else, but I cannot for the life of me remember their names right now. EOE had a huge list of talented officers. So they had like Arduin already that we talked about, Damdor, of course, Sejijin, Sanaleb. Woolius, um, Hampshire, I think, might have been there. By, no, he, he Hampshire joined way later. Way later, right? yeah. Hampshire was they actually had, Loga first. They had Cyrix. They had Vice. No, Cyrix was later, too. Was he? he? Was Loga, okay. Yeah, he was Loga first. They had Vice. Vice was a big name. He had played on the previous servers. Vice also uh, was in Addictions, and those were the guys who would get the world first uh, not exploited Green Scales Blight kill and Rift. So he was kind of a big name there. And Vice has gone on now. He made a he made a guild on Agnar that competed with Faceless. I can't remember their name right now. It might have been Addictions. So he made Addictions on Agnar, competed with Faceless a little bit. And then, you know, we had a, a really negative interaction for the life of that server. <sighs> then he made a guild on Cello, Altered Minds, I think. 
and I think we were pretty amicable there. And then he made a guild on Eridun. And I think me and Vice now are friends, basically, because we talk a lot. He's helped me a lot. And uh, he is now leading the very top guild on Eridun, which was at one point one of the most populated EQ servers ever. So the guys won like the last 10 expansions there. Got to give him huge props. Anyway, right now he's he's enemy mode because he's in EOE. And uh, Faceless had a cross who was my necromancer raid leader. Super talented guy. Uh, Lexa Vinos, who played a bard and an enchanter. He was like a lovable idiot. I remember Lex. Um, <laughs> I remember like Lex Vinos wanted to see Nagafin. The first time he came to a Nagafin raid, he was like, I really want to see him. And I was like, stay away from the door, dude. <laughs> and as soon as Nagafin spawned, he ran up and, and opened the door to, just to see him. And he didn't realize Nagafin would aggro you from his spawn point to line of sight. Like he's instantly aggroed you. So like our, our guild was like in game in the five spawn area sleeping and we would wake each other up with bat phones and audio triggers and he went up and aggro nagafin and by the time people are waking up nagafin is just like shredding the raid force yep i remember that cover i remember lex i i remember most of your officer team they were all like they were chill guys i, I they and i learned a lot about raiding from them except for this next guy who was riddle <laughs> do you remember riddle aka famorm yep. he would go on to be known as mafaka not the not the camel <gasps> are crew you mafaka. serious I fucking yeah but did he did not know that he was Mafaka, part of the Paladin Trio with Mafaka, Secrets, and Abacab and Faceless on Agnar. And he then made his own guild called Pals on a few servers. He's been pretty successful. So Riddle went on to do some things. We had Ramirez, who was a monk, quiet dude, but just knew a lot of uh, content stuff and would help me out with info. We Ramirez had Oingo. Left a while. Yeah. You remember Oingo, right? Yep. I remember what happened to Oingo. You know, I, I think he lied. Anyway, Oingo was this super talented bard that was in our guild. He created our audio trigger. Um, most guilds use like rate time now or something like that. Ours was bacon waffles. And I was like that. <laughs> and I remember that. You know, I adopted that audio trigger. After really? Face, after Faceless left, that was my personal audio trigger that only a very few people knew to get my attention with the tell. You know, back it's funny. Back then, audio triggers were like a big, like close health secret for guilds because people would like abuse them if they if you found your competitions one like we found right. eoes and we started spamming it right so um yeah, you yeah, would just oingo. leave your headphones on go take a nap and wait for the audio trigger to go off in your headphones yes oingo said he got banned he said he got permanent banned i think he just got burned out and didn't want to say it i and then I, we... I was i mean i guess that's a fair argument in hindsight he probably did get burned out but yeah we were all shocked when he got permanent banned or at least that was the story because that was a big blow I mean, who else got perma banned? You know what I mean? I know that's true. Back then, and, teams really weren't sticking their nose in things yet. Right, and like we we saw like the biggest cheaters ever on that server sometimes. So I don't think he got perma banned. I think he was just burned out and was embarrassed to say it. Then we had Beanie, who would eventually lead the guild after I would step down. She was a cleric. Sorry, um, that one was the worst mistake ever. You know, <laughs> I have a history of picking really good successors. Um. With the exception of Seeger, who was actually a really good successor. Seeger was a good one, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, there's also one other person we should mention, our spy. We had a spy in EOE named Vesper. Vesper Prin, ironically enough, I think she's like a fictional spy. Uh, but she would tell us which mobs were in window. like Because we were such noobs when the server came out. We didn't know the respawn times. We didn't know the windows. And she told us all that. She would send us every morning the uh, the message of the day for EOE, which was all their targets and when they expected them to spawn. And so that's how we first got our foot in the door for competition was we would just we would uh, take the info from their message of the day and and be there. How did you get us? Did you actually send her to EOE? No. Um, or was she man, friendly to the cause? I just I mean, like all I did all day was sit at my computer and walk around and send people tells and, and strike up conversation. And she um, she was mad about some loot decision. So then I was able to parlay that into her just giving us a ton of info. And then yep. there was a point where she's like, I don't think I should be giving you this information anymore because they're, <sighs> they're doing loot fairly again. And I was like, yeah, but like, what if someone told them that you were the spy? <laughs> she <Jesus>. was... <laughs> You were yeah. so manipulative. I mean, you still are, but you've gotten a little bit less blunt about it. Yeah, I was like, I was a little ruthless back then, I guess. And uh, so she continued spying until she quit the server. Oh, 
Oh, so that's how you figured it out. So, like, that's how you covered that you didn't have the game knowledge, because it seemed like you knew as much as EOE did. You were just real. You had really well placed friends. Yeah, I just I knew literally what they knew at that time. And then, you know, there's a lot of like at once you're in the server and you're prepping like classic was that way. But when when you're looking at Kunark and stuff, I'd probably read as much as I could and asked a ton of people. I had friends on Fippy by then who were helping me out, too. So it's all just networking. Yep. You were gearing up for Kunark. My guild was gearing up for classic. So we were yeah. starting to like, all right, they're all headed for Kunark. We can get our Nagi kills. We could go to Sky. Uh, my guild, had f- most of them had hit 50 at that point. They'd gotten all the group gear that they could so we were just eager for this for this to go live to go to go live three months and four like six weeks after the server launch so it was a long slog through classic if you include yeah. them. it was it was it felt like forever so kunark launch night comes there and, and you're with my raid force and our strategy was first we all had a field of bone potions and we were going to rush severalis our Shadow Knight team was rushing Sev, and they were going to kill Sev, and then we, were, the rest of the raid was going to go to uh, to uh, Trax Teeth and work on keys. We had this plan, which actually worked really well. Um, we, Emperor Ganic is the guy you have to turn the keys into. We grabbed him and pulled him to our camp, and all of our, our charm teams would go out, charm the foragers and hunters, and drag them back to our camp. We would kill them there and immediately turn our shit in. And whenever EOE would come near... We would kite them away, move the whole camp to another spot. And we kept repeating this. Uh, we ended up getting, a, I think, a lead on keys. Well, I guess yeah, first, we were, we were super hard on those potions. Like, I made my whole raid, click the potion, and then duck cancel the potion, resolving at one second over and over for, like, the last uh, five minutes before the server launched, just to make sure we would have the shortest gap possible between, you know, zoning. Yep, there we were at 3 a.m. in the morning waiting for that barrier message, ducking our potions. I don't remember where we gathered. But it was, it was the EC tunnel, I think. <laughs> it was the most hilarious shit ever. Remember, there used to be this uh, zone that you could go to from the EC tunnel where corpses yeah, would it go? Was the, um, yeah, I, I thought that's where it was. I just couldn't remember if that was the classic launch that we did that in, we, where your buffs wouldn't yeah. run down. Uh, yeah. so we were all buffed and we were all sitting in there. Uh, I can't remember the name of the zone. Apparently, EOE didn't know about that because they were not in the zone, right? Mm, no, it's just us. Yeah, so we, we found this zone that doesn't even exist anymore where corpses that Decayed used to go to. And you could access that on Classic and TLPs. You couldn't do anything there, but we just sat there because our buffs wouldn't tick down. So we were fully buffed with max buff timers doing this shit. And I remember before I zoned into Emerald Jungle, so like I'm literally having like three seconds from a 10-second potion cast to zone into Field of Bone from this zone. As fast as you could. I have a bard in my group, of course, and I'm just sprinting directly to EJ. Before I hit the EJ zone line, I see the yellow text for Severalis. And I'm like blown away. Like EOE Shadow Knights had already gotten him. And then before I got into Trakanon's teeth, I see the yellow text for Veneral Sathir. And again, I'm like, what the hell? Like Our this whole is what they meant. Was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah. It's impossible, right? Because you'd have to have someone go pick up the spells. To, to port to Dreadlands or run through Ferona Vi. Either way, it's not a fast run. No, you got to run all the way through uh, Dreadlands to get to Ven- Venus Sathir, down to him, into the into Carnage Castle. There's no way somebody legit made that run in that amount right. of time. Now, obviously, like we knew what happened was they warped, they, they just like piggy zone into warp a group of Shadow Knights to blitz Venus Sathir and Severalis instantly. And uh, Lex of Vinos back then actually on his own prerogative warped to Severalis too. And by the time he had warped to Severalis, he was already dead. So and like at we, this point you were very, you were not advocating this style of play. Like this was no. Yeah. You, I, I none of us was, were. I, I held out hope that there would be consequences. You know what I mean? Right. Cause we were still uh, kind of hopeful that GMs would step in, that, that G- there would be a GM presence on these servers. We didn't know. Right. And the competition hadn't gotten so bad that we had to see like the full brunt of like what kind of hacking would happen yet. This was when it, when it started, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They they didn't have any call for this and we didn't do a launch with them. You didn't launch against them in classic. So you didn't have an opportunity to see it. So then um, we get like two or three groups into, into Seb before them and they start killing uh, 
ember organic so that we can't get any more. And we end up having this poop sock at and eventually both guilds are all sitting at ember organic spawn point. And as soon as he spawns, he's getting harm touched to death before anyone can turn their keys in. Finally, this stops and uh, both guilds basically have their whole raid force keyed at the same time. Then we go in, we rush and I'm trying to pull track down the the both kills are like all over the place in Seb training, fighting. And I, I go up and I tag track and uh, all of a sudden Sejigen and Damdor walk out of my character. And I'm like, what the hell? Like they used, they like, they targeted me and warped to me mm -hmm. to get down there. Cause we were, I think we were a little bit ahead of them. And, uh, Track just kept getting pulled over both guilds with a bunch of jugs and both guilds were wiping and and it was actually like a really fun battle. Were you in the zone with us at that time? I was not. The bard I was running was at max level so I, and not geared, so I couldn't help. And I was unwilling to throw Liren into the fray because I just, I I would did not want to put my guild's life in jeopardy <laughs> right. by helping you openly on that night. It was still like... It was still, we were still waiting to see what would happen on this server. So yeah. my guild, whoever was with me that night, were all on uh, no name, no characters that were not affiliated with my guild. So we were all sitting out in EJ, waiting for the yellow text, just waiting yeah. to see what would happen. And I was getting occasional reports from people in your guild who were talking to me that it was just utter chaos. It, it went on for, I think, hours, right? It was kind of like, it was like the sun was up when Trachnon died. Anyway, we ended up both in the jails. Faceless was on the left side of the jails and Eowie was on the right side of the jails. You know, this is that little area you swim up to. Yep. And um, I guess they cooked up some plan. Like at this point, both guilds had like fully wiped multiple times and were recovering in the jails. And they called a, a plan. I think they called it Dick Torpedo. <laughs> and we this time we both both guilds rush tracking on again. And it looks like we're going to rush to his spawn point. They grab him and they their pullers dive into the water. And I noticed that they had all their Shadow Knights in the water already. And as soon as Trakadon hit the water, he just disappeared. Like he he got harm touched into oblivion. And that was their plan. Like if if they got him into the water before we got line of sight on him, they would be able to kill him because the water would block it, blah, blah, blah. And it worked. It was brilliant. Yep. So they Eowie were they were very skilled tacticians. I will absolutely give them that credit. They had oh, a definitely. lot of experience PvP rating, honestly. Super. They were super talented. Um, so yeah, we got him, and, uh, I think, I don't remember what happened to Gorn era. They might've gone and picked up Gore. Talendor got killed by DHS while all the rest of the guilds were focused on track. And I remember just like going and laying in my bed and like not moving for like two days. I just laid there. Yeah, it was, that was a really hard blow and, I, and you didn't recover for it. Like Faceless didn't recover from it. Yeah, so I feel like you went on for a while longer, though. Well, we we started uh, competing, and we won a few raid mobs, and EOE agreed to a rotation on Trackanon, and we did one Trackanon kill, and then they broke the rotation after that. Actually, guys, we, we might have guys make it into VP at all. We did. Remember the the classic uh, silver wings? Yes, pet. of course, of course, I do remember it. I think we got two tracking on kills. Um, one was rotation and one might have been a, just a win at a weird hour. Anyway, we had a, 11 total people keyed for VP. And uh, every single track on became a massive poop sock at this point. Yeah. And it, they were so dedicated to focusing on track that we'd be poop socking track and we'd find out like some other mob spawned and we would go bat phone that mob, leave the poop sock, kill that mob and come back and EOE would still be there. They were singularly focused on blocking progression for other guilds. They never yeah. compromised on that. Yeah. The, it, their goal entirely was to keep other guilds away from the endgame content. Yeah. And it they was, were very good at it. It was rough. We even got a video, I remember, of uh, remember the Asmodeus? All those Shadow Knights had like the same name. We yep. got that video of like five of their Shadow Knights warping from Sebelus entrance to Trakanon. And they got suspended for a week because of that video. And that's probably when we got our open world tracking on because a bunch of their SKs were suspended. Oh, and then so when we went into Vishan's Peak, um, I wasn't I wasn't one of the people with the keys, but our I had our raid go into Vishan's Peak and we were engaged Silverwing. We we had him down to like 80% or something, we're fighting him. And then you just see like 50 EOE dive bomb him. 
and they just engage him. Now, at that point, kill stealing was still a thing. So we just took the video, sent it in, and the whole 50 man EOE raid got suspended for seven days. And, or no, I think it was just a three day suspension. And all the loot got turned over to us. And they were so willing to eat those suspensions because they knew what they were doing was demoralizing. And it worked. Right. It worked. They were willing to take those suspensions to drive other guilds out of, off the server. Yeah, the morale blow was huge for that kind of stuff. Like, um, But we only ever got, I think, those two tracking on kills total because we never had more keys. And anybody who got a key from us, they immediately worked as hard as possible to poach those people, right, to continue weakening, weakening us. Yeah. Meanwhile, um, guild, the rest of the guilds on the server are watching this, and yeah. guild, guilds are just dropping like flies. Like yeah. there, there are a few guilds that are raiding on classic content. Mind Guild being one of them. We were doing Sky. We were working on Epics. We were um, competing on Nagi and and Vox. Uh, oddly enough, we weren't competing against other guilds on Nagi and Vox. We were competing against platformers who were six boxing mages on those targets. Yeah, I remember that. There was some exploit. That yep. was letting them do it even with 60 mages. Uh, yeah, so I was I was able to... like I had to sit and poop sock those mobs just so that my guild could get that gear and get their epics done because uh, obviously you needed pieces from the dragons even though the gear wasn't great at that point. And that was um, Tadadar and Deacon who were doing that. Yeah, Tudadar, who and He and I ended up like weirdly friends. And at one point he brought his six box of mages to help fight off another six box of mages and help my guild get some epic pieces. <laughs> Isn't it crazy that back then the six boxing mages meant you were like a huge botter? Yeah, it was because the huge ma- the huge box armies didn't come until Lockjaw because that we had Chrono on Lockjaw, so that means you could pay for your mm. accounts without real money. You still yeah. had to pay for your accounts with real money uh, back on Vulog, so we really only ever saw six boxes at at the most. That's very true. I forgot. It. Yeah, that that made a huge difference in like the boxing capabilities of people. Yeah. Um. So I, re- I remember a few specific uh, fights in this era. Like we had a Severalis that Black Syndicate contested against us mm. and they won. He happened to spawn closer to where their raid was. They got it. And that was a huge hit for us. And then we had a Talendor where Talendor spawned like right next to me and instantly Damdor and a bunch of other guys from EOE were like right underneath him killing him. They would just warp right to you if you were closer. It yeah, was, they just didn't, they didn't care. There was no repercussion. That Veneral Sathir thing, so I petitioned that, and I, I talked to GMs. This was back when you didn't just get a, a flat customer service, like copy-paste response. Head GM, Kale Dread, was like, hey, we investigated the Veneral Sathir kill on, on launch night. We found that it is doable. And I was like, no, it's fucking not. No, it's like, not. Like, I've tried to do it too. It's not doable. And it was a big, huge issue. I think we ended up talking to Prathen about it, and they they reversed it. They changed it so that um, on the timeline, that fancy little timeline they had, it showed Faceless got the first Venal Sakir kill. kill. Yeah, and they gave us the loot. But by the time they did that, Faceless was already disbanding. Yeah. So, so like, at, what, reached... at what point did I can't remember exactly? You guys didn't make it to Velius. What point did you hang up the hat? I. I think the last big one was we poop socked a Gornair. She spawned. The only person in the zone was Damdor with his six box. We got Gornair to like 10% and she gated. I've never seen Gornair gate before, but she gated and then Damdor got the kill. Jesus. He like, he warped over to her and Damdor, I think, even felt bad. He came over and gave us the loot. He's like, "Sorry, I, I, you know, I didn't know that she gated." it. And I was like, "Dude, what? The, like, what in the world is happening here?" It was a cool move that he gave us the loot and everything. But I think that was kind of like one of the straws that broke the camel's back for me. Also, at this point, I had been doxed, um, and Damdor had been doxed. I think me and Damdor were the only two people who got doxed. Um, Everyone kept their real identities pretty closely under wraps back then, like. It- like nobody knew each other's real names and you had to really dig. Yeah, I I honestly don't even know how I got doxxed to this day. But I know that Damdor and Woolius and maybe one or two other people added me on Facebook and that's how I found out I had been doxxed. Fuck. <laughs> Damdor got doxxed because they used to have a widget on their website 
that showed everyone who was in TeamSpeak. Do you remember those? So you could see how active everyone's TeamSpeaks were? Yeah, I used that against them later on. I'll tell you that story too. And Damn Door, not realizing that his TeamSpeak server was like totally visible like that or just forgetting, changed his his uh, TeamSpeak name to Damn Door and then his, his cell phone number. Oh, God. Yep. And one of our guys, Kilo, took that number. And after we disbanded, he like went on a rampage. He went on the warpath against the EOE. And him and, and uh, was it Colby? What was his name? Deke? Yeah, just Deke, that cleric. Um, they went on a warpath. Every time they would uh, zone into a zone, they would make fun of Damdor. Because Damdor, like they found, I don't want to reveal too much, but they found out he was like from a super wealthy family that owned something. They, they owned all of this thing in a place called Hibernia. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Now, Hibernia is like a, is is not like a, a a place that you can like look up. Well, I mean, it's a place you can look up. It's I'm trying to think of. It's like um, all of Ireland, I think, is what Hibernia is. So it's not like I'm giving anything specific out here. But they they owned some some major resource there, and no one calls it Hibernia, right? Like you would just say Ireland if you were like a normal human. So every time Deke and Kilo would zone into anywhere with EOE, they would say Swolernia or like Hibernia. They would just shout it. And then I think Kilo went a step further and called Damdor's like parents. And it was like, hey, your son is like bullying people in a video game in a children's video game or something crazy like Kilo was doing. But Kilo was a little like I, I remember at one point having to answer for him because people thought he was in my guild. Um and he, they thought that was the tax were coming from me, and I was like, "Nope, Kilo has never been Loga. Uh, he was, he had, he taken, he had, he had taken it a bit far." Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. This this happened like, I think it was after Faceless had died. You know what I mean? Like this was like, yeah, this was total revenge at this point. <laughs> right, it was like couldn't win, but like let's get revenge. Now, when Faceless died, we didn't just like disband the guild. We went to DHS, who at this point DHS had seen like okay, the writing's on the wall, like, they're not going to let you ever have anything, ever. Um, so DHS agreed to make a, a new guild with us. We were going to merge and become adversary. Um, and that happened. I, I don't think I was still around by the time the merge happened. Yeah, so, it ha happened pretty quick. Like, you were, you were gone and there was a new guild the next day, and it was just... Man, I was real crestfallen when you left. Yeah, I remember I gave you... I I did like a character name change and had you take my name, my character's name and, and the, the guild name Faceless so that yep. no one could steal it. Yep. I had a level one Zaid Paladin, uh, Kinos, or no, Kinos Monk, level one Zaid with the Faceless tag sitting on Melusine's account for like, I don't know, a decade until you resurrected it here on Mischief. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I, so when I got doxxed, I don't know. I think I, I used to know who did it, but basically some nobody from EOE um, called the local m l recruiting station because people at this point knew like I was joining the Navy and everything and t talked to the recruiters there. And was it was like, hey, this guy, so and so um, I'm an IRS agent and I want to let you know he has a lot of tax debt that's Me going on. Like 17. So that's not right. right. And like the recruiters <laughs> do not give a fuck about that kind of stuff. So it was kind of like a comical thing, but it, it also is kind of crazy that someone will try to do something like that. Yeah, yeah, it really was. The, 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 the bad blood was very real back then. And this is what League of Grand Adventure is. This is why I was crestfallen when you left, right? As long as the Faceless was around, as long as there was an adversary, uh, as you so aptly put it, Loga was left alone. Like, we... We were we were not a competitor of UE. Uh, we were rating an expansion behind. But when when all the competition evaporated, we were now the guild that UE had to beat. Yeah. Um, the problem with that is my guild was not a competitive rating guild and had no desire to be. We did not want to race for mobs. We did not want to poop suck mobs. Uh, we strongly held to like the play nice policy. We didn't like if I found out that you were using any kind of software in my guild, I would remove you. I, I ran a very tight ship. Um, and a lot of it is like nostalgic naivety, uh, you know, where I still believed EverQuest was supposed to be this uh, golden, perfect game that 
it long ago stopped being, but I didn't know any better. Um, Maybe it never really was. (laughs) It never really was. But also part of it was self-serving, right? My strategy for survival on Vulak was to stay off of EOE's radar. Right. And it's smart. Not not poke the bear. um, Because Because I very easily knew if they wanted to, they could stop us from getting even what we were getting. Right. You you could not beat them head to head. Nobody could. Nope. And anything that anybody could get was basically at their discretion. Right. So if no. I became a thorn in EOE's side, you'd better believe that none of, no one in my guild would even be able to like finish an epic or like do a ring war or any of the stuff that we subsisted on all the way up until uh, later on when we actually did become more competitive. Yeah. All right. So now my time on the server has come to an end and it is it is basically your story from here on out, Mel. Yep. Yep. So once you're gone, the adversary did survive a little while. Um, I believe they made it into Velius. I believe they tried to compete on Velius launch, um, but it didn't. It didn't happen. I my my facts could be a little bit wrong on there. We actually did show up for Velius launch. We were uh, we reached out to Yui. I was always very diplomatic. I was always very polite. I would speak respectfully to them. I would say, hey, we're not interested in competing. We don't want half the targets. We don't want a rotation. We, we, we don't even, we don't want to be first. Nothing. Like you guys can totally have a clear uncontested opening night. Um, but when it comes around to the next raid cycle or the next couple of cycles, can my guild get access, especially if it's access, can I, can we, can we get this kill? Um, my guild raided every other day. We had set raid hours. Um, most of the people in my guild were working professionals. They were not online 24 seven. I was one of the few people who could do crazy hours. So me and some of my leadership, uh, and for Velius launch, we somehow came to an agreement that Logo would kill Dane. The goal was to kill every target on the list as quickly as possible so we could all immediately start farming gear because we had to get the breastplate of every um, every every class of every faction to move the server forward. Uh, so it was just kill everything as quickly as possible so we can get started on farming and, and shorten the time lock as much as possible. Uh, so we were going to go for Dane. They were going to go and focus on more important targets. Um, they held to that for a couple of hours. My guild didn't rush it at 3 a.m. I think we waited until the earlier hours of the morning when more of our people were awake. Um, and we started the pull. I was actually out of town when this happened, so it was my raid leader who was doing this. Um, I'm on vacation. I get a text message. EUE broke the agreement. They zoned in while we were pulling Dane down the well, and Leapfrog doesn't killed it. So that's that was the beginning of our bad blood with EOE, like our official bad blood. Before that, we were pretty much left alone. Um, Kunark, we raided uh, classic content. We worked on epics, uh, and we didn't we didn't come into contact with them until Valius. So that it was sucks that was, too because it's like yeah. so unnecessary. It was totally unnecessary. My, I applied, there was a force there. We could have totally killed it. They they didn't need it. And But we were the only guild out there doing anything for opening. So really, like I, like I want to say adversary maybe didn't show up, but they were bored? I don't know. Whatever it was, they were very much a guild of you can't have anything. Um, only we can. And you don't deserve it because you are a casual. That was the entire mentality. So uh, this is now like, what, six months into the server? I actually pulled up notes here. We were like, we were going after targets that nobody on TLP goes after now to subsist. So we we were raiding all the Kunark targets at that point. We were in Bishan's Peak because they had left and we had, we had already like, had done everything we were all ready to go as soon as velius launched we knew we would be in vp we had already done all the questing we were just waiting for those track keys i think the first raid we did after velius launch was track we keyed all our guys we went into vp so we were farming that and then we were picking off smaller things like i don't know what, what's it like open world dragons velcator we did ring wars a lot santalak stuff that like Yui was an end of um and sleeper's tomb and we just did that other stuff that nobody touches now. It was enough. Um, we were we were content for the most part. But as the server went on, 
my guild is getting more mature. Our raid force is starting to get more skilled. I'm getting larger because as other guilds are failing, I'm merging them into my guild because nobody wanted to touch Yui. They were so toxic. They had such a toxic reputation that nobody wanted to join that guild. It was always, for the life of the server, a very small guild run by like a very close group of people. Um, they couldn't recruit. To, to, and like that's why later on they were so box reliant. Um, so basically, other guilds failed. They became logo. Logo grew and grew. By Lucklin, we were feeling like we were ready to raid content in era. We we wanted to be in end game content. We started to step it up. We showed up for launch at 3 a.m. on Luck in Lucklin. Um, we we were already tracking targets. We knew all the windows. Uh, Jackson, who you remember, Jackson Bard was one of my yeah. officers from classic he had written a program that logged all of the yellow texts and then calculated what the windows are and would spit them out to us so we had that running all the time so we knew when everything died we would contest what we could but i could only get a force together if it was like prime time hours to really even contest anything um and we we tried to stay away from the big ticket items um that would really piss off eoe um like AMP and VT. Yeah, like AMP, like Seru. We did contest a Seru once, and I'll never forget it because I think that was the fight that really made me feel like, okay, these guys are not just cheating assholes. They're actually quite brilliant. We were we were DPS racing on Seru. We had both somehow gotten to it at the same point, same time. Um, we pulled it. My tank was tanking it. Um, or rather, no, sorry, they pulled it. Their tank was tanking it. We would, we jumped on it right away to try to bring them down. They moved their entire raid to the other side of the room. We're out of, out of aggro range of Seru. Camped out, kept their tank and, and the, a couple of clerics there to keep them alive. And then let the tank die. And Seru wiped my raid because we, we didn't have aggro control. So they camped out their whole force let Sarah wipe my raid because the, the mob was loose and then logged back in and killed him. Wow. Log I'm surprised logged. they didn't just dump a, a bunch of his guards on you too. Yeah. I think we, we had cleared them on the way up or that they were maybe had a thin force and couldn't, we actually had more people there. So that was, they knew that I didn't have, that my tanks didn't have, were not second on aggro. Yeah. And that it was just going to, it was going to, my, my guild was going full force on DPS. He was going to immediately turn on all the DPS right like yeah. and that's exactly what happened it went it wiped out all of my high dps monks first right it just killed everything and they logged in and killed him he was already like partly damaged too so it was an easy kill and when that happened i was like well that was fucking tactically brilliant and of course i get to say that to my kills i was like right. out. but i was like in my mind i was like man they actually do have like a lot of skill that was my first experience with it head to head um I mean, for you, though, you could tell the guild, look, they knew that we were going to win the DPS race. So they had yeah, to they had to change tactics and they were able to think on the fly and, and coordinate like that. That's something that my guild like we were still we had a good core of solid raiders who had come from other servers who had like done enough of this that they knew the tactics. I always was able, luckily, to rec recruit raid leaders who knew their stuff. But the bulk of my force were all new to the game like like I was. Uh, I was new to Enchanter even. Like I remember I played all the way through Valak not really knowing how to charm mobs <laughs> until like way late in the server. Like it was something wow. that I never did because on a raid I never charmed mobs and then I didn't have much time to play in group content. So I didn't learn how to really charm as an Enchanter until the next server. Like I'd really use it as a tactic. Um, but my guild was hungry at this point and we were now in it. So it was no turning back. We're tracking these mobs, and one day we got lucky. And this was the real sea change. This is what this this moment in time is when EOE decided, okay, Loga has to die now. Um, Shra crashed. The zone crashed. And M always spawns when Shra comes yeah. up. And yeah. Cursed, so, right? Cursed spawned. So when, when we came back up, cursed was the curse cycle was up, and my tracker noticed it, and they didn't. It was the middle of the day. It was like it was like 11 a.m. or something like that. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get a force together, but I got enough, scraped enough people together. We got in. We did. We did cursed, and we left the zone. Right, and then we just waited. We. I was like, I was messaging people, trying to get people to log in. I was like, log in, form groups, go stay nearby, but don't go to Shra. Fly casual. <laughs> I was just like, 
we just don't want Ui to notice that something's fucked. Like if it would only take Ui to not- like to log in and notice that the zone uptime was different or that you know something like that. But two hours later, we got our shot and and spawn and was ready. We we zoned in with whatever I people I could. Um, we cothbot it up there because we had we had that already set up. Um, and we engaged, and it was real thin, it was real dicey, but we got him. And that yellow text was the most satisfying fucking yellow test that text that ever crazy. had. That's crazy. <laughs> because I think I think I even fucking got my name in it. I can't remember exactly, um, but it kind of put to rest this constant, constant. Your guild doesn't deserve content because you couldn't even kill it if we if we gave it to you. You you guys are casuals. You only raid a few hours a week. It was very clear that we were capable of of killing this content and that Yui was the blocker and it wasn't yeah. our skill level, right? All the, honestly, all the way up until the Finney server when the Agents of Change first came into EQ, that was what people said and what people believed was that these casual guilds could not kill Nagafin. They could not kill Vulak. They would not be able to kill Avatar War. And right. then when AOCs came out, it it proved that the entire time from 1999 until 2015, the only thing that ever stopped people was other people who right. were were unwilling to give folks a shot. Yep. And and the argument we would get a lot, especially on Time Locked, was we have to move, we have to do this as quickly as possible. We don't have time for some like casual guilt to muck around and take you know, extend our time lock. We got to kill stuff as quickly as possible to move the move the server first. For otherwise, we're all going to get stuck in these expansions for way longer than three months, and nobody wanted that, right? Um, I used various tactics over the years to try to play nice with EOE. I always approached them first. I tried. I I offered them so like any kind of concessions. We'll st- we don't want the end game targets. Hey, like halfway through the server, could you maybe let us get access to this? everything was always like some kind of excuse they just didn't want us in that in that thing um one thing they would I, string you along though they would string me along they would occasionally make agreements with me and then back out of them will come in and, and try to demoralize us by crushing us um like by, by uh, like stealing a mob um i would occasionally I use the if you don't cooperate we will vote no on the next next unlock I used yeah. it very sparsely though, because it was a, it was an empty threat, and I think I don't know if they realized it. we had enough people. My guild was always a larger guild, so even if they logged in every one of their boxes and voted, we could have outvoted them and really held the server back. And I think on 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 the other server on Fippy that actually it did happen at some point. Yeah. Um, and but, pop, yeah. Once they could, uh, once it was there was an instanced end zone where you could bridge bridge the whole gear gap that existed. That's when they voted no, and they made the whole top guild concept go away pretty much smart but i knew that if we did that on vulak the server population was so thin at this point it was two guilds and recruiting was getting harder and harder my guild would die if the expansions lasted longer than three months we were already scraping the bottom of the barrel for content right i had to keep us moving forward um i i have a theory about why eoe always did that with with the agreements because they were always willing to make agreements and like it was a real dice roll whether they agreed whether they kept the promise you know the whole time I ever dealt with them, I think that was your experience too. Like, yep, it was. Um, I think I think Damdor, and it it took a lot of separation from those events of those days. You know, I had to grow up a little bit to feel this way. I think Damdor is actually a nice guy who was willing to work with the casual guilds and stuff, um, and even his hated competitors. I think he was willing to work with people. I think he's a person who's willing to to work things out. Um, I think his his issue was that he was leading a group of people who wanted him to be the most hardcore motherfucker on the planet. And he probably felt um, a debt to them, right? To be that guy. Yeah. I I will say when talking to Damder versus his other, uh, his officers, he was always more civil. Um, and it did take me some distance too. I did run into Damder at some point on another TLP in a much later time period. I can't remember which one. And he wasn't, the demon that I had painted him to be in my head. Uh, but Segajin can die in a fire. Like that guy was a fucking asshole. Yeah. Uh, so I after, remember. after that M kill, here we are, we are actually VT cat, uh, tagged. I mean, my guild had already farmed all the other 10 pieces. We were just waiting for those, those orbs. So we had, I think 40 people, but we didn't, we didn't try to contest them in Vexal. We just, we did, we did. We just wanted to prove the point really. 
Um, and how did they did, react? What like um, what happened later that day? Did they? Because like I know in Kunark era there would be a lot of trash talk tells and stuff. So we didn't have that kind of back and forth trash talky relationship, but it did. It, like I, I don't think I really understood how pissed off they were until Pop, uh, because that's when that's when the shit hit the fan really. So tell us about the nasty surprise. Okay, so. We show up for pop lunch. We, I think we did Vexthal maybe when pop opened because we now had access to it. And we knew that Yui was going to be on the tier one mobs right away. And we were fine with them getting flagged first. We were like, great. Pop is the end of our, we thought pop was the end of me, of us having to skirt around the tales of Yui. End game, the end zone is instanced. Every, we both can be it at the same time. There's no more reason for them to block us. They can go through first to get all their flags. They're going to be living in elementals in time. We'll follow along behind them. We'll all be one big happy family, right? <laughs> uh, no, they decided that uh, Loga would never be in time. Uh, they would never be in elementals. Hell, they would never even be in tier two. After they flagged their mobs, I waited a few days because I want. I figured they would do it a couple times. Then I started noticing that tier one yellow techs were going off like clockwork. So by the time we were ready for it, we did Vexthal, we leveled our characters to uh, 70, 70? Uh, or 65, whatever it is in pop. 65. And 65. And we're ready to start our, our, our keys. The mobs are all dead. Tier one mobs are dead. Ely's in time at this point. They're in elementals in time. So and they're still killing Grummus. Yeah. And they're, and my Grummus, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like the, the first four or five Grummuses have gone to Ely. And it starts to fucking dawn on me that they are not going to let us flag for time. They're just, they're fucking not. I reach out to them. I'm like, hey. <laughs> hey there, friends. Um, our guild would like to flag for time. When do you guys think you're going to be done with Grummus? Oh, we don't know. We have some new, we have some new recruits who need flags. Mm-hmm. Um, we have some, we have some boxes that need to get flagged. We're, we're not, we're not sure. All right. Well, um, if you if you would lay off the next one, I'll just take your your dudes into my raid and I'll give them flags. No big deal. Um, or you could have the next two uncontested, whatever you like. Well, we still need the loot from them, which is like fucking bullshit. These guys have been farming Vexthal for for three right. months in their time. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. Well, how about you know let us kill it? We'll take the flags. You guys can have the loot. We don't need it. It's fine. We'll wait for the next one. Um, sorry, that's against guild policy, right? Whatever excuse they could give me until I had no record. They knew that I couldn't or w- and wouldn't go head to head to them. I, I wouldn't poop stock these guys, um, even though we eventually ended up having to do just that. Um, but I couldn't head to head race them and win just because they, they could, they could out DPS us. Um, they had enough boxes. They had enough skill. They knew these fights. I oh, especially once they were time geared. Yeah. Especially they were time geared. They had already, they were sitting on months of Vexthal geared. My, my force was, you know, we were raiding Vexthal, but we had a lot of catching up to do. And I had a much larger force to gear than they did. I was, I went into pop with, I think a hundred people. Wow. That was a huge guild. That's back massive then. back then. That was massive back then. I had basically absorbed every other active player on the server at this point. So we had a lot of mouths to feed. Now, didn't um, they do something crazy on pop launch, like port you guys to plane a hate or something? We had a we had a couple of forces that were that were doing a pop rush. I can't remember what we were going for. Maybe Carprin or something small. Something like we weren't trying to block them. I think we were just trying to get something done. And they ported one group of mine away because they had they had like a spy in my guild and they ported one group to play the sky i think it was nice Um, so that was that was that was a shittiness i can't i don't remember if we actually were attempting to contest them but i do remember i was there at pop launch and i remember that incident um whatever it was it was 3 a.m in the morning and i knew i couldn't beat them at all but we thought maybe we could get one 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 something down um so I have no recourse at this point. I have to open a petition, right? I've avoided bringing GMs into this. I've been hearing about what happened on Fippy this entire time. There was like a GM enforced rotation at this point. It was a mess. Um, yeah, that happened after after Faceless left Vulak. Remember, head GM Kale Dredd did his little post, and he's like, we don't want what happened on Vulak to be repeated on Fippy. I mean, fuck everyone else who's on Vulak. Right, but Hippie, you, you guys get the rotation. <laughs> right, Vulak was a smaller server, but that server's dead already. We don't care about you. Right. Uh, so we actually a, a, a few times, I think in late Lucklin, I did a petition or two asking for a rotation and was denied because 
I wanted my guild index doll and I I don't know I I back, I just assumed from what happened in classic I assumed that the guild the guild uh, the GMs were unwilling to intervene. I mean you tried and it was like yes. blatant cheating and they just they were unwilling to so I was going along this whole time thinking that I was on my own um but at this point I'm like all right I got nothing to lose I open a petition. I get through a few people who don't know what the fuck I'm talking about and I finally get to head GM Deoden. <laughs> oh, so he was um, the GM by so then. He, yeah, he was lead GM Deoden by Pop. And I had to explain Pop progression to him because he had, didn't understand how one mm-hmm. guild could block another guild. Classic. Once, once I explained what was happening, he was like, okay, first you have to go to the guild and see if you can work it out, out yourself. I can only intervene if there, if there's, if no agreement can be made. Right. So I try this, I screenshot, I, I take logs, I submit it to him. He talks to Ely, um, and eventually he, he, uh, he called it designated or something. He would designate the next kill for Loga because Ely has had, I don't know, nine kills at this point. And they're they're monopolizing content. And Head Deoden told me in a tell, because at this point, GMs would actually log into the game and talk to you on your character still. Was, right, yes. It was it, honestly, it was, it was kind of nice. <laughs> it was you fucking could have amazing. a human conversation. Yeah, I had a human conversation with this guy in Pop. I'm sitting there. Um, and he's like, Damdor does not own this server. He has to share content. And that was like fucking ray of sunshine, because no GM had ever given that impression before. I mean, you you tried. And I I didn't even know that that was a thing. He was going to actually enforce the play nice policy. Like he was actually going to try to enforce it. Um, he hesitated. He hemmed and hawed a little bit. But eventually he delegated kills to us. Um, but he made me petition every single fucking mob in progression through time and submit proof until I think around Saren he got fed up with Damdor and and this constant need to do this. Uh, because every time we would get a kill, Damdor would take his force, move it to the next one and sit on it and poop sock that mob and it was always dead. So every time we got one step further, they would just move. And they stay and they would mean a lot of they were killing they would leave mobs up in in the elementals because we couldn't touch them just so that they could block us. You're making me rethink what I said what I said about Damdor <laughs> five minutes ago. <laughs> I don't know it, I I talk to Segajin a lot in this era. Um, so this could have been Segajin pushing more than Damdor at this point, but this was total retaliation for that amp kill. Um, they did not, Logo would never be in time. I was pretty much told that I, I, I probably have screenshots of it somewhere. Um, I think around sound, I think we were like halfway there, head GM Deoden or whatever is Lee GM Deoden used the in-game mail system. Uh, to email the leadership of UE, and I think he actually sent it to the entire guild and said, these targets, the next kills of these targets will be killed by Loga, and if UE interferes, the entire guild will get suspended. And he sent that message to the entire UE guild, and he sent a copy to my, me and my leadership, and that is how we got time flight. A GM had to intervene. Nice. Um, and but to beat the content. <laughs> the content was never the problem. Right. Did you guys end up killing Quorum? Yeah, we, we once we were in time flight, we farmed that every week. Every I think it was every time it was up. Uh, we did compete a little bit at elementals, but honestly, once we were in time, Iwi kind of stopped bothering. Like they would leave elementals up sometimes because just the loot in time was better. So we we got quite a few um, elemental kills. Um, nice. And after that, that's it really. Dis- Gates of Discord is largely instanced. They did block us a little bit on flagging early on. Probably um, Zun, right? Yep. Yeah, they they did they tried a little bit, but once they were end game, like maybe the fight had gone out of it or it just wasn't fun anymore because they had to deal with this GM nonsense. Uh, and also the GMs were kind of watching at that point. Right. Um and after like we never had problems with the UE and again. Once we were end game flagged in Gates of Discord it became a non-issue uh, and we we beat current content there on until until logo folded um i hung my head up around omens it was a long stressful i think year and a half on that server that scarred me for life i thought i would never come back to tlp dealing with that kind of like ridiculous pvp i came back 
to play EverQuest and experience content I missed and get to do these raids. I was not prepared to have to go into an all-out PvP battle with another guild. Just none of us were. Like, that's what we were not. And now, several TLPs on, like, I live for that shit. Like, I'm in Faceless on every server, and we've raced yeah. from the beginning. <laughs> and, and I always said that if I had not started Loga, I would have been in Faceless because I had that, like, I liked that kind of competitive edge. But by the time Faceless got rolling, Loga was decently well-established, and I knew I would be abandoning some good players to oh, yeah. join. It would, it would have felt like a betrayal. So I kind of, I stuck it out with Loga. And I'm very happy I did. You made the Loga, right choice. Loga was an excellent guild. I, I still get messages every once in a while from people who tell me that it was the best guild that they were ever in. It was it was such a, a like a, a really, like a supportive, just a great environment. We were fairly efficient for how big we are and how, like, in hindsight, how little we knew. Um, and it was just, it was a pleasure. Other than that conflict with EOE, that was a wonderful, a wonderful experience. Um, but I was pretty exhausted, so I handed the reins over to three of my longtime officers, Beebles, Bosom, and Bullet Tooth, the three Bs in Omens, and then I gradually reduced my playtime and thought I would never be back. I never played Alirin again. I left that name behind. Um, and I think I didn't come back to TLP for like two years, two, three years. The next one was Lockjaw. Speaking of that name, Lirin, they so EOE used to have... Uh server first tracker basically all a lot of the top guilds back then had this like little server first tracker on their or progression tracker on their website so you could see what they had killed and they would list server first server first this so it'd be like vulac sleepers tomb borders server first server first dane server first and i remember there was a period of time where on their server first list they listed liren's virginity I had forgotten all about that until you brought it up today. Surprisingly yeah. they didn't attack they didn't attack me because I was a, a female like very openly i think because Mulius kind of did didn't he Mulius say some crazy shit the, like that Mulius was the only one um i think in the end uh they they actually kicked him right or like he yeah, tried to come back and they were like no actually we, we're not down uh, with he, you you're we're toxic but you're too toxic for us like that was yeah. that was um I, I always stayed very cool like I think half the fun EOE's officers had was probably trying to get a rise out of Lyran. I never lost my temper. I never lashed back out at them, no matter what ridiculous bullshit they pulled on me. I would, I was like the Michelle Obama of Vulak. They go low, I go high. It and that, and I, and I, and there was a part of me that just wanted to like roll a monk and train the fuck out of them, but I, I wouldn't do, like I couldn't do it because I knew it would not be helpful. Um, and I maintained my composure all the way through, but I so shockingly did not get like, I never got doxxed. I think maybe they, I would like to say they had a grudging respect for me for holding it together for that long under that kind of pressure. I think they for, probably did. Yeah. For like having, for keeping a guild going. Cause Vulag was, Vulag was a server that was destined to fail. We were the, we were the rollover server. So the population was always very low. Recruiting was hard almost immediately and then we had that early die off with that with the with the servers coming down so it was i was constantly recruiting just to stay yeah. alive just to keep enough raiders uh, alive um and i'm sure that they had they had equal problems they were they were a little more cushioned from it because they had more boxers or people with experience boxing and they used tools to like make up for the lack of players that they had but yeah uh, plus the experience always helped right the gear always helped they were the best geared on the server they had access to all the best gear but they never were a large force we were always bigger than them from like velius on we always had more headcount yeah um and we lost very very few people to eoe they had such a terrible reputation that people would quit the server rather than join them um if, if you, yeah you know both um th that was the hidden meta that was the hidden meta back then. People didn't realize on the Vulek and Fippy servers that reputation mattered. And not just reputation like I killed it first, but reputation like my guild is not full of assholes. My guild doesn't grief people. It flew over everyone's head. Yeah. Um, later on, on, on servers nowadays, people get it. People get the the meta is one thing kills people, kills guilds, right? Attrition. Attrition. One thing stops recruitment, being a piece of shit. Like you need a way to make your guild stand out. You need to attract players. You need to cast a wide net and you need to treat people well. 
and have a, a, the best reputation you can if you want a chance of going the distance, which is like, I think what people should aspire to. But if you just want to do classic group pop, you could be full of assholes. And consequently, every time pop is over on a server, most of the assholes quit. That, that is true because the competition's gone. At that point, griefing and warping and all that doesn't mean as much. Like there's right. not as many ways to screw the other guy when everything's instance content. Yeah. And now you and I have played, I mean, so many times over the years. You've been in static groups with me. We've done innumerable expansion launches. Um, but I have to say, and I don't think I've ever told you this, but I have a tremendous, tremendous respect for you and for what you were able to do and stick out on Vulak. Because I personally, I was way too weak to to stick it out. Um, I couldn't handle it, couldn't hack it. And um, I wasn't, I was not mature. Maybe I'm, st I'm probably still not mature, but I definitely was not as mature as you were back then. And so I always bought fire with fire in a battle that I could see clearly was not in my favor. And so what you did provided a, a good home base for all the players who wanted to play decently and stuff uh, on that server. And you did a great job. Thank you. That, that actually means a lot because I looked up to you as a guild leader early on because, I mean, <laughs> maybe now I know it's fluff, but you always projected like you knew your shit. And not only that... You talked to me about having a vision for Vulog where everyone got to experience, like you talked about Vulog as the mecha that I wanted it to be, that, you know, everyone got to raid, we would rotate, we would share, it wouldn't just be one predatory guild. Like you wanted, you were, you would talk, I don't know if it was a big game or not, or if you actually believed it, but if Faceless won the race or won the battle, then the, Vulog would be a great place for everybody. And I believed it. And, and I think you've been that, like that was, I think you actually did believe that then. I mean, look at look at Lockjaw. Look at early Lockjaw, right? As soon as the server first were done, immediately we set up a rotation with Ascended Darkness and, and MIM. So I think uh, I did my very best to be true to those words. And when I left Vulak, I always said, the next time there's a TLP server, I'm going to come back, I'm going to win, and I'm going to make it a better server than what we had on Vulak, and people are going to share. And look, to the did, greatest extent did, possible, I, I did my best to do that. Yeah, and you have, and you did like damn well. I, I think you were like, sorry to give away your age here. I think you were you were a teenager. You were a teenager when this was happening, which means that when EverQuest was live, you were probably too young to know any of it. Uh, so you were coming with almost as little as little knowledge as I did. But you still, you still were real competition for some of the best players Vulok had at the time. Well, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd call myself real competition. I was a real Look, big least, nuisance. You're a nuisance. <laughs> um, yeah, and I and I learned a lot from of what not to do from you and from yeah. and what to do. Like I, I actually learned a lot. Of, like I remember your raid leaders uh, helped us early on with like our first um, uh, Nagi kills and our first uh, Kazakh Du kills. You were always there helping me with like strategy and tactics and stuff like that as I was learning how to raid. So I always looked up to you, and I was sad that I didn't get a chance to be in Faceless because honestly, if you had survived, right, and the guild was and the server was a more um, fair place, I think at some point I probably would have left Logan and joined Faceless so that I could be in the top guild because I had always wanted to, to be in the top guild on a server. I didn't get to do yeah. that, right? I mean, I just didn't have it in me. Um, it was too stressful. Was, I mean, even now, you know, I'm, I'm that kind of I, I I find myself stressed out a lot over the game. Uh, but back then it was it was way too much stress for me to handle and and like the burden of trying to lead i really felt um i felt like i owed everyone in the guild i was Same. like okay everyone has joined faceless because i said we would be this guild and i owe it to them to make it that guild and insofar as i failed to produce that i felt i was letting them down so like after kunark when i just like laid in my bed for two days i felt like man there are hundreds of people in this guild who looked to me to do something right and I failed and it was devastating to my uh my young you know my my young mindset on things yeah I I carried that weight too because I knew that if Loga failed there was nowhere to go yeah. there was no other guild a few of like uh, there were a, occasionally a small guild would pop up um I think there was one later on in Velius that lived shortly but they never could recruit enough to sustain and they would quickly go under or we would merge them. Um, there might have been a small European guild that was floating around every once in a while, but there was nowhere to go. So if Loga failed, if we couldn't if we couldn't scrape up enough raid content to feed our forces and keep us progressing. And sometimes, man, I was 
I was stretching the word progression. Like I would celebrate like epic completions as, as progression, like yeah, just to, to, to try to keep morale up through those early, early year, years, those early expansions when there's really nothing, there's nothing we could raid um, on raid nights. So it was, it was rough, um, especially later on. That's why when it was over and my guild was safely in instance content, I hung up my hat and, and I thought I would never be back. I was like, okay, I got to see time. My goal was to go and, and kill Quorum. I got to do that. And I thought I would never be back. Um, yeah, I mean, not only that, except for Sleeper's Tomb, you guys did every single thing in the game, right? We did do Sleeper's Tomb. We just didn't get to see the Sleeper awake. They woke the right, Sleeper. Right. So we got to see, like, we got to kill the the, the, comp- the open one. That's it. But we did yeah. do every other, like, we did, ev- we cleared every other raid. Some of, uh, by Luckland, we were doing that stuff in era, Luckland afterwards, but we did, cl- we made it a point to clear everything in every expansion. So everyone got to see the raids they missed. Nice. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, that's really good. Now, you guys eventually would merge into EOE and DODH just because you, there was no longer a population to sustain raiding, yeah. right? At that point, server from I was gone at that point. I had some contact with who with uh, the remaining guild. They could, we couldn't field a raid force anymore. There just wasn't enough people. Um, anyway, was suffering equally. Uh, we we were begging to be merged with Fippy at that point. Like they please, literally like, never did it, right? Not till after never everyone did left. It, never did it. They merged Vulog into Fippy like long after there was zero population on that server, but they never did it. So my guild, out of like, and I and I can't blame them for it. And also at that point, most of the enough time had passed that a lot of the people who were really in it with the OE were probably gone. So there wasn't that many people left who remembered how bad it was, especially from Classic. Yeah. So whoever was left merged, but I do know quite a few people left. Uh, and and uh, left the server at that point, and a few people hung around in like tiny guilds with like four or five boxers in it. Like Depredation was one who refused to join EOE, um, and a couple of other people, Draxon, it was a couple, whoever was alive then, just ref- never would never wear that tag and would rather yeah. quit. Right? I mean, Depredation's but, a paladin in real life too, right? Yeah, he really is. Uh, so I think he ended up with like Cook. Remember Cook Roll? I do. I remember uh, Cook Clan. Cook Clan. He ended up in Cook Clan at the very end. I did try to come Oof. back and check out um, Serpent Spine because Depp was still playing. He's like, "Hey, come play. Make a make a new character. Make a new dragon or whatever. Come play. Come check it out." Um, he went through the trouble. He like leveled a, a, a dragon for me and gave me this character, and I never I never got to play. He still he still uh, makes fun of me for that. That <laughs> teased me about it every once in a while that he made me this character. So I never went back. Um, Lockjaw was the next one I played on. And I honestly played on that one because of you, because Faceless was going to be on it. And I was like, this is my chance. I get to be Faceless now. And then uh, you betrayed me by handing that guild to Darth, and I will never forgive you for it. Yeah, it was rough. I mean, I, I don't want to get too far in, in, no, into the lockdown, right? Because it's the next episode. episode. Yep, I can't but, wait to hear who you interview for the lockdown episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I got I to gotta find somebody. Hey, if you want to do lockjaw come hit me up, please. I'm, I need some <laughs> for Lockjaw still. All right, if you guys made it this far, we have pretty much reached the end. The rest of the story goes like this. EOE won all remaining expansions on Vulak until they merged. They didn't merge. They they paid to transfer to Fippy. Then they went up against uh, Dima's boys over in Citizen. Citizen won. Anyone who wanted to stay around from EOE joined Citizen. Citizen did the same thing that EOE was doing where they made it all the way until they couldn't write anymore. No guild from either server reached alive. Um, Overall, both servers were a failure because mm-hmm. the stated goals didn't happen. And I would argue that it, the blame is on Sony, SOE, back then because they didn't step in soon enough. They didn't enforce policy well enough. And it just crippled the populations early on and they never recovered. So They did learn a lot from those servers, though, because a lot of the shit that was pulled on those servers was directly addressed by Lockshaw and uh, and. Uh... And later, Finny, things like uh, they, you know, they nerfed Shadow Knights right away. They changed Mage Pets. They introduced Mitigation of the Mighty. Um, they eventually put in Instance Rating, even in Classic. All the things that would have saved maybe Fuhawk and Fippy. <laughs> yeah. Now, one thing they did right away on Lockjaw and Rage Fire, I'm getting ahead, but we'll just say it, uh, was they they drastically decreased the the respawn timers of raid mobs. Remember mm-hmm. Nagafin and them, like we talked about, 3.5 days was normal. On LJ and RF, it was like 24 hours, basically. Yeah. And they hoped that by doing that, it would spread content. But really what it did was make you want to kill yourself if you were in the top <laughs> guild because you had to kill all four targets every 24 hours. Yep. 
Yep. yep. Um, but anyway, a, a story for another time. Uh, Mel, it has been absolutely my pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming out and giving us almost two hours of your time here. <laughs> no problem. Uh, great speaking to you. Good luck with the podcast. Yeah, thanks. Do you have anything you want to say? Uh, if anyone from Loga is out there, hit me up, Meliocene, on uh, Mischief Server. I would love to hear from you guys. Would well, you want to give out your Discord handle or no? It's still it's actually Meliocene, Zoe. They'll find me. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, so Discord, just hit up Meliocene with her shiny new Meliocene underscore zero zero one. Yep, they actually made me change it. <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. Thank you, and that is all for today's episode. See you next time. We might do some uh, short episodes between now and I think the next episode after this will be, the next big episode will be Lockjaw and Ragefire. All right, Zade out. I know.